time, we're going to move along with our agenda. And you get to hear me speak again. It's going to be on women professionals in male dominated industries. And I do have three panelists. So if I may please call Sky, Letty, and Kathy to the front for me. No way, no way. So this is something that um, we found to be very dynamic and multiple conversations. I'm going to moderate the panel, but real quick, I'm going to give you a small background of myself. So some of you guys know I've been in um, healthcare administration for 22 years, but during my term in healthcare administration, I decided to branch out and buy fitness studios. So I'm a business entrepreneur. And women-owned businesses are about 20% in the franchise world. So I'm a franchisee of Orange Theory Fitness. And I just want to share a few things that have happened to me as a female business owner in that industry. The first one was that they thought I was the head trainer. Well, you look fit. Are you the coach? No, not the coach. Oh, are you the manager? No, not the manager. To me, the title didn't matter, but the assumption immediately was, you've got to be a coach or a manager. What other role would you have, right? And so you kind of realize very quickly, like, oh, this is how we look at each other. We automatically assume, right? Um, Dr. Heidi, a lot of people assume physicians are men, right? Like, oh, what's your, what's your doctor's name? I'm like, it's, it's a female, right? But it's just the way our brains are. During COVID, I was renegotiating some of my leases or asking for them to move it, the terms to the back end of my lease because my businesses were closed for 10 weeks. And one of my landlords said, well, why don't you call me back after you speak to your husband? I'm not married. This was just last year. He lived in Boca. I almost called my Boca club to go find him. I was like, this gentleman, should I call him a gentleman? Right, right. And so I was like, oh, okay. And when I told him, I was like, well, this is, it's just me. You're dealing with me. And these, these, you know, I can pay this or we can do it this way. You'll, you know, hopefully get your money. I don't know what's going to happen with my businesses. And I'm trying to be forthcoming. And he's like, oh, well, then let me talk to my boss. Why don't you go do that and get back to me, right? And then the third time I really realized how different things are for women was when I bought my house. Now, this was before I owned my businesses. I was 28. And I kept getting asked, well, who's going to co-sign your loan? I said, it's just me. My, here's all my finances. It's not a million-dollar home. It's very affordable. Fits my budget. Well, you're going to need a co-signer. And I said, why am I going to need a co-signer? Well, what happens if you lose your job? What's your backup plan? And I just never felt like they would ask a man those questions. Now, lo and behold, I bought my house on my own. But this was 12 years ago, and I'm sure there would be a lot more think about it if a bank asked somebody that question now, because we are becoming more open and we're discussing these items. So that's why we have these ladies here today to talk about women professionals and male dominated industries. So if you're in one of these industries, I just want you to raise your hand. Aerospace engineer, less than 8% women. Construction workers of the trade are 9% women. Executives in construction, 14.1% women. Clergy, 17.6% women. Software developers, 19.1. Farmers, 24.4. Financial analysts, 39.9%. So these numbers are areas that we can obviously talk to young girls and young women about going into, but they're still highly male dominated. So I want each one of our panelists to introduce themselves, give us, give us your name, your background, and then I'm gonna have you answer this question. Did you always want to go into this field and did you know it was male dominant when you entered into your career? And we'll start with you, Ms. Kathy. Kathy. Good 
Good morning, everybody. I'm Kathy Pease from the Palm Beaches, and I am in the construction industry. I set tile for a living, and I've been doing it for 40, 40 years now, believe it or not. My knees are still in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> and um, no, I didn't anticipate going into the construction industry. I just needed a job. And so I was offered this opportunity by another lady, as a matter of fact. And um, I just went into it. Um, I just feel it's my gift. I can do it. And um, that's where I got to. Thank you, Ms. Kathy. Uh, hello, I'm the new kid on the block. My name is Leticia Carrasan. I'm with the Boca Deerfield um, Club. And I am in banking. And no, I didn't think I was getting into that. I actually was part of a work furlough, get to know the, the career uh, during my high school. And I worked, I was hired for a, a very national big bank. Um, and that's how I got started in banking as a teller. So surprise, I'm still in it somehow. Um, I'm Sky Kent um, Burnett. Okay, I will come up again later. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did not know, well, I'm a contract manager for a construction company in Prince Louis, Alabama. Um, I did not intend to be in the construction industry. I actually moved to Tuscaloosa and needed a job because I paid for everything myself and there was no way to be in college and not have a job for free. And one of the ones that I was able to get was as a runner for a construction company, which, okay, yeah, they paid really well for that. Um, so when it came time for me to graduate, before I graduated, the guys I worked for pulled me aside and said, hey, we don't want to move you. We want to move you up. We want to create a position for you. Will you please stay? And given that my degree was in education, and I knew what the starting rate was there and what the starting rate was over here in construction. I was like, ooh, hey, that's a really good idea. <laughs> My intent was to go back to grad school a year later and move along. Well, here we are 26 years later and I'm still in construction. <laughs> so that's a little about me. I love that, Sky. My sister is a teacher, as you guys know, and yes, education, a lot of you are in education, is, is, uh, does not reimburse at all or pay what you're worth. Which brings us to the pay gap. So in 2021 and 2022, uh, the pay gap is still 82 cents to the dollar. So women make 82 cents to a man's $1. And Imagine what that pay would look like, Sky, if you had compared teaching, construction, and then construction at a dollar of what you're worth and not 18% less, right? So what brings me to the next question is, do you feel you're compensated equally to your male counterpart? The answer goes no. If you've been around me the past three days, you know that I've checked my email, that I've logged in to various programs, that I have sent contracts, that I have received a couple of contracts that I've been asked questions about. And I know because I've worked with these guys for 26 years that that's not how they would, they would disconnect and they would be at wherever they are, be it baseball, football, or conference like this, although I don't know that any of them do anything like this to get that. So I, I don't think I'm. Oh my. Thank you. There you go. There you go. So, um, in the money business, I know that I was not and have not been compensated equally to my uh, male counterparts. I do want to say and thank Dr. Rubin for being here. He was the only male in the room. We got to get more in here. Thank you, Dr. Rubin. Um, and, and I also, uh, now that I shifted gears a little bit, I'm actually in um, talent acquisition for the same institution that I work for. 
and I know and I can see it. So I'm trying to, you'll hear more a little bit later, but I'm trying to even the playing field um, when it comes to salary and, and what are the salaries that are being paid out there for specific positions. And um, it, it's interesting how you find out certain ways in certain companies, you're not allowed to speak about your salary, right? Oh, hush, hush. Mm -mm, nobody can know what you make. Um, and that's the, that's, that's how you never find out. We undersell ourselves in the interview process in attaining that position. We undersell ourselves. We have to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that. You bring up a good point, Letty. Um, they say that a man will look at a job description and he sees 10 things and he's like, oh, I'm good at four of those. I'm going to apply. And a woman and see the job description and there's 10 things and we're like oh i don't need this 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 or this i probably won't make the cut so exactly what you said we undersell ourselves undervalue ourselves from the start when we look at that job description say oh i can knock four of those out of the park let me go in there and show them what i can do oh what about those six things oh, i'll get there i'll show you we don't have to focus on those right now but that's literally how our brains work. Um, and I'm sure there's doctors in here that can tell me more about how this brain works, but we don't have time. So, all right, Ms. Cassie. I have to say that I am, um, but it's taken a long time to prove that I can do the work that these guys can do. As a woman, I'm more quality-minded, not quantity-minded, like men tend to be. So I am very blessed that I, I'm okay. And that's why we have her on the panel. It's not all bad. It's not all doom and gloom. We have a lot of work to do, right? There's, there's a lot of work to do. But thank you for sharing that. Please. When we were doing our house, we renovated our house years ago. And uh, I brought Kathy in to meet my husband. And she came down to title our house. And uh, we, we brought in some men, and they were not quality minded. They were just, we can get the job done, no big deal. But Kathy did our whole house, and our title is gorgeous, and she did a beautiful job. She, she physically did carrying the buckets of mud. She's got arms on her that are like, got. She's in the trade, physically does the construction work. Yes. And what a great shout out to support one of our own women here, right? So thank you so much. Our screen is buffering for so those of you at home were trying to get it back. I apologize, you just lost your visual. So is there a specific example you can provide of when you were reminded that you're a woman in a male-dominated industry? Well, this is kind of a funny story. When I first got into the tile business, there was a man that I was working for, and he kept holding me off and holding me off. And I went up to him, and I said, don't you understand how I get paid for what I lay? <laughs> and I realized what I said after that, and he just looked at me and kind of smirked because. <laughs> but um, I would say no. And I, let me preface this by saying I'm a Cuban American immigrant, came when I was five years old, migrated with my family. Um, we didn't stay in Miami, we went straight to New York City. So I grew up in New York City, Jersey City, and, and Northern California.
to this diversity role, I went up against 12 candidates, out of which seven were men. And I interviewed in New York City, I interviewed in South Florida, so numerous interview panel discussions and such. So very proud of myself. And I had a small child at that time. I had to have a family meeting and say, by the way, I'll be gone 30 days of every month. Um, flying in at six in the morning, doing the red eye flight, going straight to the office and would not be in the hotel till 11 o'clock at night. The, the preface, preface of diversity, the, you know, what is the known fact of diversity in the United States is very different than Latin America, Central America, South America, or Brazil. Um, and so I had to do a focus group initiative that was confidential and away from any uh, direct reports with an external company to all, I had the individual presidents of countries choose those countries. Out of 22 countries that I ran, eight of them were chosen. Out of 19,000 employees, about 1,000 were done. When that report came back, it was a 500-page report. And it was social economics and women in specific roles. Because there, when you interview, and we had to, because we were a U.S.-based company, they had to abide by us in certain respects. I could not go in there and institute a diversity plan based on diversity here. Very different. But I can implement the fact that if you're going to interview for that institution, you're not going to submit a photo of yourself. You're not going to say that you're married and you're not going to say that you're pregnant. Because those were, guess what, you're out of that loop. You're not going to be hired. So the first thing, and I'm going to take a little bit, I walked into the boardroom to present this 500 page report on the findings and out of the 20 countries, Two were women. Two presidents of those countries for that company were women, and I was the third one on the on the totem pole. Now, mind you, I walk in, and the actual head of all of the countries, he thought I was the secretary bringing in the report for the actual diversity director, which is a regional position. Oh yeah, you can leave the paperwork there. And I said, no, 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 I'll be passing it around. I'm Leticia Carasana. One thing is, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen is don't be afraid of your shadow. You got to hold up your head up high and whatever you're going to walk into, you got to go with it full force, like a bull in the China cabinet. And don't let anybody, anybody, you know, uh, you know. So at that point, a lot did change. There's more to the story. Um, if you got to do a cooler side, that's, you know, conversation later on, but there's more to that story and to that one meeting. But after that, I implemented all strategies within all of the countries. And I went out and did formal presentations to employees. And it's quite interesting the reaction that I would get when I would get out there. So anyway, there you go. Thank you, no, thank you. So every day I am reminded that I am a woman in the female industry because I walk into my office and we have a front office and there are women up there. And they, you know, they are the front office. They keep the day-to-day -day moving. They truly are the backbone of the company. We couldn't be there without them. And then there is the row where my office is. I'm the only female back there. I'm the only female that goes to meetings for the company. I'm the only one who leaves and attends meetings with superintendents of school systems, owners of companies, um, presidents of universities, building committees for large corporations. I'm the only one. So I climb into trucks all the time. I constantly am sent emails to Mr. Burnett or Mr. Kent, or now because I've recently got married to Mr. Kent Burnett, as in Kent is my first name. It's great. <laughs> And I very gently try to sign a response email with a Mrs. or, oh, just as a side note, I'm female, not a Mr. You know, kindly trying to say, hey, don't call and expect a man because you're not gonna find him. Um, however, I do have one specific example. In going to all these different meetings that I go to, um, sometimes you show up somewhere and there are 
several meetings going on. And one day I went to um, the state of Mississippi, directly across the park from the Capitol building. And I got to the floor where I was going and um, I took a left and there was clearly a sign and I don't know if y'all know this about Tom Reed. Um, there was clearly a sign that said that that was where my meeting was. And over here was another meeting. And in my profession, we love interior designers because they make us look pretty. And, um, <laughs> and so the other meeting was for interior designers. And I walked in and took my little left turn and was promptly greeted by someone who said, no, ma'am, you need to go that way. And I said, no, I'm going to this meeting. No, ma'am, your meeting is over here. That's where the interior designers are going. And I just kind of stood there with a look on my face. And you know, they say sometimes God just steps in at the right moment. About that time, the door swings open behind me and this very nice dressed man comes in and he turns right. And they're like, oh no, it's over here. And he said, no, I'm, I'm going over here. And I just went, bless you, thank you. It was perfect, it was perfect. That is very perfect timing, very perfect timing. So I have one quick thing to share on this topic. I, uh, as I said, I'm in healthcare administration. A new doctor joined our practice in 06, a very young executive, right? 25 years old. He's there for about six months. He comes into my office and he says, hey, I was thinking, how about we bring in, familiar with, I know the gentleman, how about we bring so-and-so in to do your job and you can be his assistant? I said, how about you get out of my office? And he laughed. And I called the senior partner and I said, oh, and I said, so this just happened. And I said, so I don't know if you want to fire me for telling this guy to get out of my office. He's like, oh no, I want to talk to him, right? And so strangely enough, I still work with the, the two doctors. And here's the thing, the doctor that came into my office, and it was, it was 07 when he came in, we're really good friends now. But about 18 months ago, I sent him an uh, office of the inspector general report where the guy who he wanted to take my job, which is fine by the federal government for improper billing, <laughs> has to pay a $1.1 million fine. And so I said, I know I'm conservative in my approach to healthcare, but you're never going to face a lawsuit. If you want that type of growth, quick and fast, this is going to be the end result. But again, he and I are close now, but I'll never forget that day. I was young. I could have just kind of caved and been like, yeah, he probably can do my job better. He probably was more qualified. I was young. I was just learning healthcare. But I, you know, I called the senior partner. I was like, hi, I still want to do this job, but this guy doesn't want me to. So definitely reminded that I was a woman that day. So this one, I hope, isn't you know too triggering for any of you. But has there ever been any appropriate, inappropriate, or unwanted physical touch or statements which occurred to you while you were in the workplace? Again, I work in construction. <laughs> okay. um, To just make it perfect. So I have to go to those meetings sometimes and I showed up to the meeting. Now this was a building that was and had been partially approved for use. So there were college students in the building. There was administration from the university in the building. There was staff from the university in the building. There were construction workers in the building. There were engineers, architects, and some testing agency was there. So I walked in not knowing where my people exactly were in the building and I walked in through a front entrance and I stopped at the front desk and I told the lady who was there who I was and I said, I'm going to call my superintendent to get him to come get me because I don't know exactly where they are and I'm not 100% with the floor plan. 
I'll just wait here for him. And I said, I'm just going to step off over to the side and I'll be right over there. And so I kind of removed myself from her path. And I was just standing there waiting. And a construction worker came in. He was an electrician and made a very inappropriate comment about my derriere. And I clenched my jaw and I said, you need to get to work, sir. I'm sure that's not what you're here for. And kind of turned my body away from him just to stop the conversation because I had nowhere else really to go. And um, my superintendent coworker came out and he looked at me. Now I, I will say this, the company I work for, we are like a big, huge family where we don't have a lot of turnover especially with the upper management and our field people, we just, we come there and we stay because it is typically a very welcoming environment and typically a very family environment. So he ran to the corner and saw the look on my face and he was like, oh no, what's going on? I said, just take me where we need to go. So when we get where we need to go, the electrician's boss is standing there and I was like, hmm, Real bad day for this electrician because that's my old college roommate. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so um, there were a lot of phone calls, a lot of apologies. He was removed from campus by his employers. Um, since then, if they're on a project that we're on, they do remove him. But I mean, that was a totally unnecessary situation that he's created for himself by one sentence. And it, you know, this happened three years ago. So it's, it's, it still happens a lot on construction sites. I'm sure Kathy has better stories. Thank so, you for sharing, Ken. And my case, I don't know if it's me and my personality. Um, my father used to always say, when you walk in a room, you command the room, you command respect. Um, and so, the incident that I'm going to discuss is something that I had to do and intervene um, with regards to an employee when I was in that regional position. I had gotten numerous phone calls and emails from other admin assists from the legal counsel floor um, stating about one of our legal counsel um, degrading, uh, mistreating, belligerence um, with, one, with his assistant. And he had already gone through four. So I'm thinking, <laughs> somebody's turning a blind eye. Nobody's doing anything. I don't understand. So what happens is I conjured up a plan. So the plan was I couldn't come down the elevator because he would hear the ding, the, you know, the window, the doors would open. That would give me the alert. So I said to the assistants, I need you to call my cell. I need you to put the phone on speaker. When he starts this, I'm going to come down the stairs. And it so happens it was perfect timing because he was facing away from the stairs. I had his back was to me when I came out. And when I came out of the stairs, he's just going at it. Foul language, belligerence, he's just going at it. The girl never was the one to come and tell me anything or anybody. Um, she was in fear of losing her job. She was in fear this guy's done it four times. Why not? It's going <laughs> to me next, right? So I, this is kind of like the Napoleon conflict. I'm only 5'3". This guy's shorter than me. All right, so I walk up and I, he's, he's in a rage and screaming and the whole shebang. And I just walk up and I'm like, what? And I said, no, not what? In my office now, who do you think you are? I'm the regional and I will have your job. Now, you wanna do it here? You wanna do it upstairs five, floor, five floors up? And he didn't wanna move. So I did it right there. And I went at it with him and I said, you know, how could you do this? You're a legal counsel. This is not acceptable, especially with what we have as policies here. This is harassment. And I said it loud enough. And I looked around and I said, and you're all my witnesses. Plus I have it on my cell phone. I've been recording it all the time. That's illegal. Oh, no, I don't care. I said, what you're doing here is illegal. Needless to say, no longer with the company. So with that statement, ladies, what I'm saying is you can't be a passerby. You can't just be someone just sitting around and not doing anything. If someone's being disrespectful in whatever form, I understand it. You don't want the altercation. You don't want the situation. But if you're in a level of position where you see that you can do something 
And if they don't want to even be known as the person to say this or complain about it, certain companies have where you can confidentially call it in. Okay? But don't stay idle by and not do a, a, anything about it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, <laughs> I've been in this really, really long time. So, um, a lot of the guys that work on the jobs that I'm on, they, you can tell that they're thinking things that you don't want them thinking, and it's hard. But the contractors that I work with have all, um, I've earned their respect. And so anybody who has done anything inappropriate with me, we're no longer on the job. That's just the way it went. I can't think of any particular event that happened. Um, but yes, there was a lot of, of, you know, comments made. And I grew up with three brothers, so I just would just let it go away. So that's, yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Sky. So the other part that I should have said during my little piece was, um, I don't know how many of you are intimately familiar with university policies, but most campuses have a no harassment policy. So this man's one sentence by his employer got him removed from this campus and he can no longer work on any projects on this campus. It also could have potentially caused that company millions of dollars by not being allowed for them to be on campus because there is a zero harassment policy. And this man had no clue who I was. I could have been an administrator. I could have been you know, a student's mother, I could have been anyone and he had no, I could have been, I mean, he had no clue who I was and it could have potentially cost millions for that company. Thank you ladies for sharing. Uh, part of the reason we had this panel today is not just to focus on what's wrong, right? We wanna talk about encouragement and action briefly before we move on to the next section. Um, but we still have a long way to go. So these things are happening as uh, past Governor Marie said, that happened to you last year? Like this guy asked you last year to have your husband, go talk to your husband? Yeah, last year. And so women have a lot of things we need to move forward. But as um, they spoke about, Don Marie and Kathy spoke about yesterday, advocacy, right? If we partner together, we pull together, we, we can make a difference. I'm gonna skip one slide um, just for the sake of time and talk about a little bit of action. Now this first one says raise minimum wage and tipped minimum wage because 70% of minimum wage workers in 2012, I know old data, but it is a new report, were women, 70%. Now I'll tell you as a small business owner, when they told me you need to pay 15 or $15 an hour to your high school students, I was like, oh, you're gonna put us out of business, right? Um, I pay very well, our medical employees, our fitness coaches, they're, they're paid well. But when you need that part-time help to be a file clerk, right? All of these things. But then if you, you look, you stop, right? And you reassess. And when you find out that 70% of the people making minimum wage are women, who am I to contribute to that number, that statistic, right? So it really starts with us. Support fair scheduling practices. Um, that's the flexibility and the right to request. One of you guys mentioned that, oh, they were, we were going to a football game or a hockey game or they had hockey practice. But what about when we have to get off to go get our kids? And then what about us that don't have kids? Can I leave to go to yoga because it's for my mental health? Is that okay? Because I'll be way more productive. But as women, we don't feel we have the right to request that time. We also, you know, we don't leave until it's done. You know, it's like, oh, I've got a hockey game tonight as a man. I'm going to go. And we're like, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I actually, I probably need to cancel that, right? We don't feel that confidence that Letty's been talking about on this panel. Support pay transparency. So teachers, government workers, their salaries are all right there out there on the, on the web, right? We know what they make. But in our small companies, especially male dominated, let's not let people know what we make and then we can bring in people making less and we can pay women less because nobody knows. There's a lot of pay transparency going on in HR. Um, if you are an HR manager, bless you. Um, I did HR for a long time and it gets harder and harder and harder. I feel like there's no advocate for the employer anymore, but I also see my employee side of you and I understand all of this. Um, and as Kathy said, 
if you just treat people right, do things the right way, the employees, even if I mess up as an employer, they're not going to come sue me, right? Kind of a conversation. What did I do wrong? Have that conversation. Uh, meet with your company's HR department to start that conversation. So any of you guys that are in, in an industry or even in your current industry, have a conversation with what they're doing for women in your company. And encourage trades, trade schools for young women. Um, we talked about this a little bit at district meeting. I know President Lois and Huntsville is doing a lot too with trying to get more women into the construction industry. Um, and honestly, there are days where I kind of wish I was a plumber or an electrician. Um, they make some serious money and they're not going to be phased out by technology. My toilet is always going to overflow and pipes are always going to break. And, you know, it's also not regulated as some of our other industries as to, you know, oh, you can't make this or you can't, you know, charge this. So my last question for our panel, and then we will move on, is would you encourage young ladies to enter into your field of work? And if yes, what advice would you have for them? I would say yes, definitely. Um, I'm actually training a young woman to take over a portion of what I do um, to go to bid. And I was really worried about her. Like she's got one of those faces. You can't read whether she's taking it in, whether it's, it's really hitting home. And um, we had been to several, like through several bid processes and there's laws that you have to follow and different things you have to do, boxes you have to check. and. Um, just, I was like, God, I just don't know. I like her. She's nice, but I'm not sure she's getting it. And then we walked into a bid um, actually two months ago. We walked into actually a pre bid meeting, and um, we were the only women in the room. And uh, the guy who's the contract manager for the university was sitting there. And we went through the whole meeting. And at the end of the meeting, he said, hey, Sky, can I get you to hold back? I need to ask you a few questions. I need your opinion on something. And our direct competitor um, was also at this meeting. And his head whipped around on a swivel. Like, did you just ask her and not me? But it goes back to what Kathy's saying. I've been in the business long enough. I've been around long enough. They know that I'm aware of all of the things and that I can give you an honest answer. And if you have talked to me, you know that I don't really hold back a whole lot. I mean, I'm not a little tiny bit, but We not love a lot. that trait about you, Sky. <laughs> so it was uh, it, to her, and, and she recognized that. And so when we got in the car afterwards, she was like, wow, that's impressive. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it happens every now and then. And then I started telling her stories about different places that it happened. And I, it kind of encouraged me a little more because Oh, it's not, it's not bad. It's, I do have some respect and it is a little different being the woman in the room who knows the answer to the question. So I would definitely encourage women in construction. I would also say I would encourage women in construction in the field because we do have an eye for detail and we do pay more attention to quality. And when I've seen women on the job site, their work is not on the punch list usually. I have to agree with both of you. And in Miami, I was mentioning uh, last night or yesterday that there's an actual construction company made up of all women. And they've been, they, they do the bidding and they do everything from nuts to bolts. And so that's, it's good to see, it's refreshing to see. Our trade is one of the, uh, a trade job, um, plumbing, like AC, HVAC, they're going away. Most people don't want to even do it. Um, and so, Anyway, that's not my, <laughs> but um, since I have been able to, um, I, I worked my way up in the banking industry from teller all the way up to regional, as I mentioned before, I've always been a mentor. I go to universities. Um, I take um, individuals, whether women or men under my wing and um, show them how to develop themselves and not just stay in one. If you're comfortable staying as a teller, you know, God bless. But if you want to advance, don't wait for somebody to push you. You've got to push yourself. Um, so the avenues that I that I take are in the development piece. Um, yes, wholeheartedly. And in my current role, I'm in charge of the salary. We're given a range of salary of what we can play depending upon the position and what I look for. And I'm the one that suggests the salary. 
for those applicants um, to the management uh, based on I have to put together the reasons why. And then I will, I just have a position right now that's coming up where the man has less experience than the woman. I'm going to be paying her a dollar more an hour. Why? Because of the experience. I'm going nuts to bolts. I give the information that they want to know and the reasons why. When you're working for a larger institution and you have that ability, that's where the, you know, it starts with you. You've got to make that, that extra move to it. Just don't be, oh yeah, let's pay her 20 bucks, 30, 50, whatever it is. Make a case about it. Thank you. So this question reminds me of when all the men were sent off to war and you have that image of that woman or that they can do that. They all went to work and they filled these men's positions. And I think that's when women realized, hey, there are a lot of things that we can accomplish. I definitely um, would recommend women and I try and bring women all the time into you know, the construction industry because as you said, we are more quality minded. We, you know, we pay attention to detail. So, yeah. Well, thank you ladies for being on the panel today. And obviously most women in this room know their worth, know their value, and they've walked in these shoes. But how are we going to take it outside of this room and help young girls know that, or even women starting their career? And so that's the action plan I have for you guys after this panel. It's not just about complaining, it's about respecting where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. So thank you guys. And thank you, Kathy, Letty, and Scott.